once I've established equation 5 as equal to a equals 10 minus 2b, what I can do is I can get rid of a variable in equation 4 by substitution. And that allows me to have a one equation, one variable situation. And that would be difficult to do if I were to do addition subtraction because these variables would be hard to eliminate because of that extra b tied with the a and vice versa. If I want to get rid of the b, the a is tied to the b. So then I'm going to set up equation 4. And wherever I see an a, I'm going to replace it with the equivalent a equals 10 minus 2b. And then I end up with a b here, plus a. So whenever I hit an a, I'm going to replace that a with a 10 minus 2b, plus 3b. And that's going to be equal to 22. So I'm going to multiply this out. I end up with 10b minus 2b squared, plus 10 minus 2b plus 3b equals 22. I'm just going to combine my like terms first. So 10 minus 2 plus 3 is 11b minus 2b squared plus 10 equals 22. So I have a quadratic here. And this is going to be hard to isolate b and b squared. So I'm going to do something that you might not have seen yet. But we're going to factor this. And there's a reason why we learned all this factoring before. And I'll show you in a second here. So I'm going to, first of all, make it equal to 0 on the left-hand side. So I'm going to move everything to the right-hand side. So plus 2b minus 11b. And then minus 10 from both sides. So I get plus 12. And I'm going to factor this quadratic. So to factor this quadratic, I have 2b squared plus 12. This diagonal product is 24b squared. So I needed to add up to negative 11b and multiply to 24b squared. Well, that's going to be negative 8b, negative 3b. Okay. And once I get this, then I can factor. The common factor here is going to be 2b. The common factor here is going to be negative 3. The common factor between these two terms is just going to be the b. And the common factor here is going to be negative 4. And when I multiply this out, I'm going to get all those terms, which means that this is the factored form of the right-hand side of the equation. So this is an equivalent expression is going to be 2b minus 3 times b minus 4. Okay, now why would I do this? Well, if it's equal to 0, then if I can just make one of these brackets equal to 0, I know the whole equation is equal to 0. So I only have to worry about one bracket at a time. So here, I end up with a b value equal to 4. And then here, I get a second b value, and that's going to be equal to 3 over 2. And then this represents my solutions for b, because this is a, what would solve this equation. Well, if I know that b is equal to 4, I just plug it back into the a, and I would end up with a is equal to, well, a is 10 minus 2b. Well, that's going to be a is equal to 2. In this case here, if b is, is, b is 1.5, 10 minus 2 times 1.5 is going to be equal to 7. And then lastly, I can just go ahead and solve for the last variable c. So I can just go into equation number 2. And I know that a plus b plus c is equal to 16. So I'm going to solve the first one here. So 2 plus 4 plus c equals 16. That makes 60, the c equal to 10. Okay, so then c is equal to 10. c equals 10. And then for equation 2, I can plug in these values. a plus b plus c equals 16. So this is 8.5 plus c equals 16. So c is equal to 7.5. Okay, so here c is equal to 7.5. And this represents solutions to this equation. I can just check this. 
Okay, so I, if I do b times a, that's going to be 1 and a half times 7. It's going to be 10.5 plus 7.5 equals 18. That's correct. b times a is 8 plus 10 is equal to 18. That's going to work here. We checked it in equation 2. We can just check in equation 3. So 2 plus 3b is 12. That's 14. Minus 10 is equal to 4. We can check this a plus 3b, 3b is going to be 4.5, so that's going to be 11.5 minus 7.5 is going to be equal to 4. So it works for all three sets. So there's actually two sets, sorry, two sets. There's two sets of solutions for this system of equations.